he's obviously fighting something, but you just gotta grind. He just need he needs one birdie and eight pars to make the cut. Uh, I was still battling some driver issues. I was still with that driver that wasn't feeling quite comfortable for me. And that was kind of leaking into the confidence of that club, which, as I've mentioned, is my favorite club normally. So that was something that I definitely had to battle through. I didn't get it on camera, but his mother walked by him. And he said, now we compete. It's time to compete. It's tough, love, but I quite like that saying. So let's compete, baby. Let's go. And from there, I had a lot of work to do. I think four over for the tournament, not in a good spot. I didn't birdie the first, which is a very easy par five. And then I bogeyed the second hole. So I was actually five over for the tournament with the cut line being a couple over, I'm pretty sure, which was a tough spot. And then I actually hit it a bad shot on the par three as well. Didn't allow me to get a really good look at that. Yeah, and then just let it run around. They can cut up the chat. I think downwind if I carry down the bottom, it's gone. Yeah, yeah, I don't mind, I don't know. 255, so 5 off, so that's 250, minus 20 is 250. Yeah, so it's a 4. Oh, yeah, 5. And what else did you do? 5. And then from there, it was kind of just, I let the brakes off a little bit. I was, I was frustrated, I was annoyed, probably not handling my emotions as well as I should have, but I channeled them really well to be able to kind of just let loose. Got a bad break on the fourth hole. I kind of hit a perfect tee shot, I thought, and just the nature of the course, the elevation changes, the mounds and the fairways that had just run through into a really awkward side hill lie where I would have had like a lob wedge in off a flat lie had it done what I thought it was gonna do. Managed to hit that one into like 20 feet and hole a putt. Um, and at that point still, I just still didn't think I was a big chance of making the cut. It was still a long shot. There was only really tough holes left to play. The fifth hole is a brutal hole. OB right, hazard left, dead straight, not a wide fairway and about 470 yards. Hit a nice little three iron, or at least what I thought was nice. It was a little out to the right, ended up in a super thick lie, laid up to about 50, 55 yards on the par four. And I was able to hit that 55 yarder in there at about six feet and hold that for par, which was a really great kind of momentum boost. Hole six, I hit a nice one down the fairway. A shorter par four, hit a 56 degree up in there to about, I hit a great shot, I hit it in there at about seven feet. Great shot. But a really tough right to left breaking putt, a lot of slope, had to play it outside the hole, was able to roll that in. Then on seven, Tough, like the tee shot plays like 30 downhill, 40 downhill. I think I hit about a five iron off the tee, which left me with about a 52 degree into the hole. Tucked a little pin there on the left, left it to about 12 to 14 feet, just short of the hole. And rolled that in as well. So all of a sudden now I was on the cut line with a couple holes to play out of nowhere, or seemingly out of nowhere. In a four hole stretch, I'd gone from way outside to making a great par, three good birdies, and now I had two holes to go to be able to make the cut. Eight, I hit it just over the back, left myself in a tricky position to be able to get up and down. Hit an okay chip to about five feet, left myself one of those putts that Nobody loves when you're deep under pressure, but it was about a five footer downhill left to right, starting it outside the hole. Was able to roll that in, which was great. And then the ninth hole at Cascada is unbelievable. Yeah, it's one of the weirdest par fives I've ever played, to be quite honest. There's just stuff everywhere. There's cables going across the fairway. There's hazard right and left. There's fescue. You have a forced carry of like 290 yards. It's completely blind. And if you want to hit driver, you basically have to hit the fairway or lose your ball. So that wasn't really an option when I'm on the cut line. So the only option they give you off the tee from there, if you're not going to hit driver, is to hit about an eight iron off the tee. So I hit eight iron off the tee, and then I hit another eight iron up there to probably 130 yards out, and blind one over the corner, over the water layup, kind of got held up in the left rough.
hit that on there about 30 feet, was able to two putt. So squeezed in the cut line, which was huge for my confidence, huge for the momentum of kind of playing tournament golf. I needed to kind of continue that, that momentum from the week before in Cadiz, and I was happy to do that. Yeah. Woo! Never be a professional golfer. Too stressful for me. Two things that don't last in this world, boys and girls. Dogs that chase cars and pros who putt for pars. <laughs> Thanks for the wisdom. See you tomorrow morning, 6 a.m. Well, okay. <laughs> <an> absolutely incredible <laughs> day. The roller, the roller coaster. This could be. This is like my piece de resistance. This with you and Louis. Yeah. The combination of you two guys trying to fight to take the cut. Yeah. yeah. It's a good shit. I don't know, man. <laughs> I hit it good and then kept hitting the fescue and then pulled some putts and said, fuck it, we're gonna do this. If you bogey two tomorrow, I'm gonna literally like, Man, I don't you're know. gonna see me like rolling down the hill in frustration. <laughs> any par five in the world, that would be the last one that I picked. <laughs> yeah. the five iron, eight iron? No, eight iron off the tee, eight iron for your second shot, but just over a forest with, and there's water up there, there's fescue up there. And then you get on the side hill on a left to right wind and you're like, oh my God. And then you got a putt on pole. Do you get text blood in after a round like that? Two. I'm <laughs> on the challenge to it, there's not the US Open. Yeah. <laughs> now that you're through to the weekend, can you just like whale driver around here and see what happens? Uh, like, no. <laughs> <laughs> there's no room, man. I'm gonna hit more than I did today, but today with the wind, the way it's set up. Yeah, it was a I, tough day. It was a very tough day. But the way the wind's set up today, the places that I would hit driver, so that's 12, which was pumping down wind. I hit three wood, 330 yeah. on that hole. Um, 15, which is the par five, straight down wind. Three wood would go about 350 down that hole. Um, there's no places to hit it. Yeah, there isn't. Okay, so round one, get paired with Lewis Kahn, 14 year old boy. 13, I think. 13 years old. Do you think about that at all? Like, you know, no, I, I've been that guy before. Like, I've played professional events when I was 13 and 14, so I kind of understood his perspective. It was cool. It was good. All right, let's go. All right, so this is Lewis Klein, 13 years old. He just made the cut in the Challenge Tour. I was telling him he's now better than me. I was 14 when I made my first cut in a, in a pro event, and he's 13. So, how you feeling, bro? I'm feeling good. Yeah. Um, I'm happy I made it at this age. Uh, it, it just feels so good. And you feels beat, good? And you beat me, too. That's all right. You got two more <laughs> nah, days. Two nah, more days. Two more days. Two more days. Yeah. yeah. You excited yeah. to be on YouTube? Yeah. Wow. YouTube. Nice. <laughs> It'll be fun. <laughs> well, congratulations, man. I'm proud of you. Thanks. So good much. luck this weekend. Thank you. Go get it. That was so cool to watch, man. Really good. Thank you. A course like that was awesome for him because he got to send the driver a lot. He plays a no fear. He's a fantastic player. So yeah, no, it was cool to see him do well as well. He beat me after a couple of days, which was tough, but ended up getting him after four rounds, but... Golf is such an interesting sport. Very, very rarely do you win, so I imagine making three birdies to make a cut does feel like a little win, even if it's not quite the win you wanted to be before. Yeah, it's rewarding. I mean, all the little things that you can do to make a cut, I think, uh, like make a cut or move up 10 positions or whatever, they're all little wins, you at least have to see them that way. Um, in order to progress and kind of keep moving forward. So yeah, it was big. I mean, that's two days at home doing nothing at the hotel or practicing or whatever. And that's two days where I get to keep kind of furthering my game and competing and seeing what I can do with the week. So um, when you're playing off invites as I am at the moment, every week's important. And yeah, that was really important to get through that cut. So obviously, the first two days didn't go the way Russ wanted, and you know, he's three shots off the cut, six holes to play. I personally, I didn't think he was gonna do it. I, I thought his headspace was kind of too negative at that time. I thought it just wasn't gonna be his week, and we were gonna be spending the weekend in Prague 
and kind of being a part of the process of what it's like to miss a cut. But Ruff's, you know, all credit to him, he fought super hard, he made three birdies, and I think that just goes to show you how quickly things can switch in golf and flip back positively, and how important momentum is in the game of golf. You know, I think that is such a takeaway for me watching professionals the last five weeks is that when it starts to go positively, when you make two or three birdies in a stretch of six holes, like that really feeds into the rest of the round. And then in the reverse way, if you make a couple bogeys, it can kind of take all that away. And I think that's really important for what happened the rest of the week. You know, roughs could just never get any momentum around that golf course. You got a lot of bad breaks, which I think he took very personally, which I don't think you can take personally in golf. Like it's not your fault, but it's also not fair, but it is what it is. You know, it's just golf, it's the rubber of the green. He got a bunch of bad breaks and he could never kind of get that momentum over the weekend. He could never stretch a run of eight holes where it was three birdies, no bogeys. You know, every time he'd make a birdie, he'd kind of like come back with a bogey. And that kind of like leveled him out pretty evenly across the field and that's where he finished. I think he finished T38. So that just kind of shows you that every step forward he took, he took two steps back. So he kind of got stuck in the mud a little bit that week. Especially coming off a week last week where he kind of like slowly built himself into the tournament of like what does it look like when you just can't find it and his game wasn't not, it wasn't not there he hit in a bunch of incredible shots it just didn't ever seem comfortable he didn't ever seem like very confident in what he was doing and I think that goes to show that it just wasn't a good course fit and that's another part of golf is that you know it's not like there's not a lot of other sports maybe tennis where the difference in grass between grass and clay and hard court but golf is so about like how you feel around the course. Very unique to golf. You know, I think that Ruff's playing these type of golf courses in Europe that are just so drastically different than what he's used to is going to be really good for him mentally, it's going to be good for his game, and it's going to make him a more complete player, even if in that process there's a few hurdles and step backs that he has to go through, because I think that ultimately, like, He's just become a bit Americanized in his game and I think if he wants to have kind of like a long fruitful career playing around the world then he's going to have to take himself out of his comfort zone. Coming off uh, Spain was such an interesting week with Ruffs because I I really thought, and I know Josh thought, that he was going to play really well. His game seemed like it was there, his mental headspace was good. That goes, goes to show you how tough a sport golf is, you know. Everything could be leading up into the right place and when you get there, something goes. How do we feel about this hill? Hey, stay in school, kids, because this shit's fucking hard. After the first two days, obviously Ruffs kind of fights his way to make the cut and I'll be honest, six holes to play, three shots away from the cut, I didn't think he was going to do it and it shows you how 
when something clicks, it kind of can click quickly, and how important momentum, that was my word of the trip really, is momentum in golf. It can go south fast, but it can also go positively really quick too. Yeah, I mean, it's a tricky course. It's not one that I would say is specifically great for my golf game. Like I only probably got to hit no more than two or three drivers per round. Um, I like to hit that club, like I've alluded to, maybe the actual driver that I had those weeks wasn't my favorite. So maybe it was not a bad thing that I didn't get to hit it that much. But yeah, it wasn't a course that really suited my eye. Um, I had to play very conservative off the tee and try to be a bit more aggressive into the greens. Therefore, it felt hard to make a lot of birdies to shoot, have that round where I was going to really shoot up the leaderboard. Have a look, but I think this is 224 or 220 front. Yeah, but everything from there, if it has a bit of tumble, it all runs around. It's off your left a little bit, so. Yeah, you can start at the left edge of the shed if you want. just it lands on the head. The last, I just don't want to go through. I guess like if we end up like I'd rather end up kind of shitty how we did yesterday on top of the hill. Yeah, still not bad. Up yeah, there. still fine. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. As opposed to. Yeah, I don't mind that. It's either five or six. from the week? Uh, I mean, we'll start golf first and then we'll start about the rooming situation. I want to get into that. No, nah, good week. I mean, you can come a bit, walk a bit faster if you want. I'm sorry, I got a fucking gimbal. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, essentially, pretty lucky to be playing on the weekend, I would say. Like, good, good fight back and grind to make the cut with probably not his best stuff, you would say. Um, slowly working his way into some form, a bit more aggressive, which I like. Um, starting to get a bit comfortable, more comfortable out here. Putter's a little bit cold today, so not a whole lot going on for the camera crew, but all in all, I mean, something to build on. Yeah. Good I feel day. like it's like good for him. To, like this golf course is so different than what he usually plays. Like, it's good to... Yeah, that's good, and I, but 
Yeah, I agree. I'd like to get him out of the mindset like, oh, this isn't my course. I don't want to hit driver. Like, use that shit to your strength. Not so much driver, but like, short, dinky course. Let's get it down there. Yeah. You know, everyone's like, oh, this is a weird course. Yeah, so what? Let's fucking hit it to 30 yards and pitch it on. If we miss the cut, let's go home. If we don't, we're going to win, so. I understand there's holes where you can't be aggressive, and I get that, but in the grand scheme of things, like one tournament, you can help your career, but it's not really going to break it. Yeah, exactly. Words of wisdom from someone who quit. <laughs>